Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we'll be doing something we've never done before. We're going to be installing this anchor system complete with a battery backup. This comes with an automatic transfer switch, a 12 circuit panel that we've connected 100 amps to. And this will be part one of two, showing you how we installed this new system. All right, so the idea here is to hang this Anchor Solix F3800, connect it to this new main breaker 200 amp panel. And as you can see, we got started here. I'm in, I'm in tight quarters. We mounted this plywood board so we can mount these French cleats that come with the Anchor Solix that support the transfer switch. And then right beside it over here will be a new 12 circuit main lug only panel, which comes with the unit itself. I want to start off by giving a shout out to my friend Joe, who is a subscriber of mine, and this is his house. He wanted me to do this work for him. Joe came up to me one day while I was cleaning my truck in a parking lot outside of a Costco on Route 22 in North Plainfield. I was waiting to go to a job, and Joe came up to me and says, hey, I know you. I'm a subscriber. I love your channel. And uh, I was really taken aback by that. Um, it doesn't happen all the time, although it does happen sometimes at Home Depot or maybe if I'm at Lowe's or at a supply house where other electricians watch my channel. So Joe, I want to say thank you for having me to your house to do this work and to trust me that I'm going to install this system correctly for you. Uh, so I just wanted to get that out of the way first. Joe, thank you very much. All right. So the first thing we had to do there was to mount the three quarter inch plywood because we only had two mounting studs behind that drywall. And it specifically says in the directions here to find structure to mount this transfer switch. And what you see me here doing here is assembling a French cleat system that needs to be attached to some kind of structure. So that's why we put the plywood up. It's pretty simple. There's a couple set screws uh, to attach the automatic transfer switch that you see there to the French cleats. And that's what I'm doing here. Make sure you put those set screws in before you mount these panels. Otherwise you won't have any room to do that. Uh, so with this kit comes this 12 circuit Cutler Hammer BR panel. It's actually a 3R enclosure, which means it's intended or whether not intended, but you can mount this outside. It's rated to be mounted in the exterior, but that's not the case here. It's a little bit higher than the automatic transfer switch because what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out of the side of the transfer switch and into the bottom of this panel, as you see here, with some flexible inch and a quarter conduit for our 100 amp feeder. This is pretty simple installation. It takes a little bit of time, a little bit of thinking and review, obviously. This is something I've never done before with this company. So I wanted to make sure I got it right. Joe sent me a, a video uh, through a text message showing me what he wanted me to do at his house, this exact system. Uh, this is a shout out to Spicer Designs. I think the guy's in Indianapolis or Indiana, I should say. And he had done a video on this not too long ago. I did watch most of that video before Joe sent it to me. But he said, this is exactly what I want you to do. And so I reviewed that video and I went on Anchor's website, found out some of the specifications. I met with Joe. Uh, we agreed upon um, the amount that this is going to cost to install. I applied for the permit. And then, of course, uh, a week or two later, um, the township called me and let me know that the permit was ready to go. So once that's ready and it's paid for, now I'm legally allowed to do this work. I'm going straight in there with a 90. Let's get the out of the way. You're not going to fold it right into the bottom. Into the 100 amp panel on the left there. We'll feed the line side of this transfer switch. This will be the load side out to the panel. And then we'll use this hole that we made here with <clears throat> the one inch flex, which I guess I haven't brought in yet for the branch circuits that we're going to relocate from this panel over to this panel. All right, so when I knocked out this KO, I took out a little bit more than I needed to. So it's a little bit bigger than an inch and a quarter. It's actually an inch and a half. So I went out and I picked up what's known as a reducing washer. What this reducing washer does is exactly what you think it does. It makes, it takes care of that mistake that I made is what it does. Boom, look at that, beautiful, beautiful job. All 
right, so anytime you're using the conductor larger than or number four or larger, you have to have a plastic bushing. And the purpose of the bushing is to not ruin the insulation or the integrity of the insulation around the conductors. This requirement can be found in Article 314, Tax 17 of the National Electric Code. So there's one there. There's one here. It's going to be hard to get this in. I'm probably not going to ruin the conductor, but it is required. So we got to put it on. Here we go. We put it on here. There we go. And when we do this one, uh, <clears throat> I'll do it here as well. So one of my concerns right now is getting around this 90. Sometimes it's not easy. But we'll see how it goes. I might have to take this back out. We'll see. I am installing number three copper, which is good for 100 amps, and a number six equipment grounding conductor. Uh, I believe the requirements that is number eight THHM, but I got number six. And that's what we're going to be running between the new main lug only panel. It's going to contain our emergency circuits and, of course, the transfer switch. I'd like to take a moment to thank all of my subscribers. I've recently passed 31,000 subscribers. That's incredible. And I thank each and every one of you for subscribing. These crimpers here are super large for larger conductors and crimping larger conductors. I've had this for a long time. And I actually bought a smaller crimper just specifically for this job, and I left it in my garage. So here I am using this giant crimper to crimp number three copper for these terminations that actually came with the panel. There wasn't enough of them, though, because I got four conductors in and four conductors out. There wasn't enough to do all eight terminations here uh, for the size conductors that I'm using here. So I did some lugs on the line side, which you'll see later in this video. If you're thinking about doing this job yourself, make sure you put your crimps on and take care of all your terminations inside this transfer switch first before you terminate in your emergency panel or from your source panel. In this case, the panel right beside me to my left, which is off camera. The reason being is there's not a lot of room here for spare conductor space, just enough to come out of the wireway and onto the terminal. So I did all my crimps and then I did all my terminations before I terminated the conductors inside the emergency panel to my right right there. And yes, you can see the wires are in position and this door keeps getting in my way. This was kind of a pain in the neck. This is just what comes with the territories. There probably was a way to prop that door open so it wouldn't be in my way, but I wasn't too concerned. I just uh, made the best of it here. And for this panel, I did all number three aug for the two hots and for the neutral. I know I could have sized that neutral a little bit smaller. The reason being is that neutral is only gonna carry the unbalanced current between L1 and L2. So it's not gonna be carrying the full current, although it's sized now to carry the full current should we have the full 100 amps on L1 or on L2 by itself. The neutral always carries the unbalanced current back to the source to complete the circuit. Speaking of completing the circuit and going back to the source, my third year of instructing at the IEC at the Education and Training Center in Somerset, New Jersey begins on September 8th. My first night of class is on September 9th. I'll be teaching on Mondays and Wednesdays at the school. And if you're coming to the school and you're watching this video now, I just want to say hello right now. I'll see you guys in a couple of weeks and I'm really looking forward to getting back into the classroom and instructing a new group of apprentices. Okay, so to terminate this number three copper, which is a large conductor, it, it carries 100 amps. Uh, to 
to terminate this on the neutral bar, we need to put in an adapter to be able to fit such a larger conductor. This is known as a fork terminal. It sits underneath two of the lugs on the neutral bar, and that's how it attaches uh, to make that connection. Very important that you not split the conductors and use two terminals. You must use the proper fastener uh, to terminate this neutral conductor, which is what I'm doing here. This might seem like a pain in the neck here, especially if you're a dual yourselfer, but very important how you terminate this neutral conductor because if this fails, then the whole panel itself fails and you won't have a path uh, to neutral. You won't have any 120 volt loads correctly terminated going back to the source. So you'll have some problems. You'll probably damage equipment. So this termination is very important. That's why I'm going over this and stressing the importance of it. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. Part of the setup here is these current transformers. These are gonna go around the main breaker inside the panel here, or rather, the, this is a main lug only panel. I haven't been outside, but I'm assuming that there's a disconnect outside there. Anyway, these tie around the two hot legs, L1 and L2, so that the transfer switch knows when utility power has been lost. So we gotta get these through with our feeders. The insulation's rated for that, and so that's what we're doing here. These current transformers are the equivalent to what N1 and N2 is to a Generac standby generator. It's just a sensing device to alert the transfer switch that utility power has been lost and to automatically transfer from the utility to the battery power for the circuits that are gonna be connected to this transfer switch. This is the purpose of the current transformers. They go in the same conduit as the supply conductors for this transfer switch. And of course, the insulation is rated at 600 volts like the other conductors in this conduit, making it a legal installation. The wiring that I'm running from the panel to the automatic transfer switch, I know it is feeders. It's a four wire. Uh, we have 120 volts on each one of our hot legs. And then of course we have a grounded neutral conductor and then we have an equipment grounding conductor, which is used to clear faults. This is not to be confused with a branch circuit. These are actually your feeders. Anything that's not a service related utility incoming wires is going to be a feeder. Uh, for instance, the standby generators that I do, those are feeders that go between the transfer switch and the generator, just like this here. Instead of having the generator that runs on natural gas, we're gonna be installing DC rated batteries and inside this transfer switch, there is an inverter, which inverts it from DC to AC so that we're able to use the power. And you'll see in part two of this series, uh, the connection of the batteries, which actually go right into the bottom of this automatic transfer switch. I'm fascinated. Um, I'm actually really looking forward to connecting the batteries and seeing the whole system work. And um, uh, it's very, I'm very excited to be doing something new. Uh, I don't know how many of these I'll be doing in the future, uh, but I like, I'm happy to be able to have this experience of installing such a system like this. Uh, here, you see it, I'm plugging in the um, current transformers into the transfer switch at the bottom of those green connectors. Here, what I'm doing is I'm using a 1024 bolt to attach this lug to the enclosure. And then I'm gonna come back and I'm going to terminate my equipment grounding conductor to this lug. The hole that was there was made in the factory and I just used the right size bolt to attach the slug, making this an effective ground fault current path. Uh, now, if you didn't, if you use a sheet metal screw, that would be a violation of the code. Article 250 TAC 8 goes over the methods of a connecting an equipment grounding conductor. And if you're unsure of this, you should either read the code book or find somebody who can interpret that section for you and do this correctly. Very important uh, grounding and bonding in the National Electric Code and for being an electrician. So if you're unsure how to do this, make sure you ask, especially you can ask me down in the comments if you'd like. Okay, so I'm done for the first day here. I still haven't done the branch circuits from the main breaker panel to the emergency panel over here, but I'm gonna come back and do that another day. This ends the first chapter of this brand new Anchor Solix panel first one I've ever done this is an F3800 and as you can see the control panel is lit and ready to go so today we 
install this 100 amp circuit breaker with number three copper conductors. Through these are the current transformer wires. They're connected around the line voltage L1 and L2. It feeds the transfer switch. The transfer switch supplies the generator panel. And uh, we'll come back and finish this up in a few days. So thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. And as always, thank you for watching this video. We'll see you next time.